Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan, and welcome to part two of our interview with Ms. Anya Kramer, the CEO of Turn Biotechnologies, the company that Dr. Sebastiano co-founded. In this video, Ms. Kramer talks about the initial targets for ERA, the timeline for the clinical trials and FDA approval. And with that, let me start the interview. Talking about the regulatory path, have right. you kind of even have you started that conversation? We have. We've been looking at that because you know, for me, we have to have all of the different uh, legs of the stool, so to speak, come together. Right? We have to advance the technology from a developmental standpoint. Mm -hmm. We have to make certain that we're not just, um, I'll call it, playing in the lab forever. Right? We have to be able to migrate that into the next phase, and to do that, we have to have the ability to get it through regulatory, and then. When you think regulatory, you also have to think about being able to move it through a clinical environment. So how can this then also be applied uh, into a patient in the clinic? So we're looking at all of those and we're exploring the various aspects and we're not yet at a point where we're uh, ready to file anything with the FDA imminently, but it is very, very close um, and it will be contingent then on, on these data that we're very diligently working on uh, in our animal work today. Okay, so you're, you're you're working on animals. Do you have like an, a a time frame in your mind for when you would start clinical trials? Ideally, um, it's sooner than later. So we're we're hopeful um, that come early 2021 that we have some some interesting uh, results start to develop out of the work we're doing, and that you know if we're very uh, up. Optimistic, I would say there is a chance that we uh, look with an eye towards that still before 2021 is out. How long do you think the clinical trial will take? Mm. So, so maybe speak to a little bit about the, the phases. So when you think about the phases, we would initially move into a, a phase one, right? A phase one uh, is typically a small size population that you collaborate with FDA on. Um, those don't take that long dependent upon the therapeutic indication that you select to pursue. Mm -hmm. So uh, an area that the company is very focused on at the moment is dermatology. Um, mm -hmm. We are looking at skin, uh, you know, 60% of, of the body is entailed of some uh, organ that we can all relate to as, as the skin or skin related. And when we think about dermatology, we believe that some of the work in the clinic could be done rather expeditiously um, so it was definitely a consideration as we started to think about therapeutic uh, opportunities. Right. So do you have a, like a plan for phase two? Could you talk about that at, at this point? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk more generally, but if we yeah. advance through a, a phase one, mm -hmm. uh, which is usually a very small, you know, smaller population, you would then typically move into endpoints that would measure a very specific indication. I'll leave that general for now, mm -hmm. but a phase two um, is is then done typically over a course, you could say that could be accomplished within a, a one year period, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so as you think about progressing this technology, we are not, we're not a decade out here. We are you know, a few years potentially out of moving this through phase two into a phase three and getting a product to market. Right. So would the end goal be that it would be something that would not be indication dependent. It would just be something that people eventually, would... eventually, Richard. Eventually. So I would say, you know, initially we we have to sort of crawl, walk, and then run, and yeah. right. And and it's important for us to move forward the technology. So moving this this cell reprogramming forward and yeah. doing it in such a manner, if I can accomplish that in at least an initial therapy and an initial indication, right? Mm -hmm. Follow the path of approval. Yeah. That learning and the insights that come back to the company, um, because you have to keep in mind, irrespective of therapeutic target, there are a lot of commonalities among our cells and there are a lot of commonalities among the environment in which they function. So the learnings that we get back off of even one therapy advancing Mm. will gain tremendous insight and advantage as we progress others. So right. your question about can it eventually be broader? Certainly the goal is I'd love to see a world where I can inject 
one time and have a full systemic solution. But I'm not going to spend my my dollars today, right, right. chasing that. I want to advance something and get something out into the market that, that we can all benefit from while we advance other things. So the, the R, mRNA, right, is, is actually going into the cell. Is there any kind of concern with um, like matching types? Do you get autoimmune, any autoimmune problems or, do, um, yeah, I mean, like rejection of the RNA? No. So, so you're basically expressing your, your cell zone protein, right? As I'm right. sure Victoria took you through. When we go through this process that we have to for, for creating a drug product, we will run it through the series of all of what we consider toxicity studies, right? All the toxicity panels for, for exactly what you're asking. We would run it through the gamut of safety studies that FDA requires that also include everything from carcinogenic studies, right? All of those are, are very rigorous and standard, um, fairly structured um, design studies that we consider non-clinical studies. Mm -hmm. And those non-clinical studies are, will all be conducted. They're typically done uh, in parallel. So you have your, your clinical studies and your non-clinical studies, and they'll work collaboratively in parallel, ultimately resulting in, in an approved product that has been validated for, for those purposes. Right. Okay. Um, so can I just ask you one question? I, is there like a habit that you have, because you, you're running a you know, a longevity, a company focused on longevity. Is there a habit that you have that you can share with, with the audience that you use to kind of enhance your longevity? Yeah, so um, I am a, a huge, huge fan of consuming a lot of water. Um, so for me, water is an important component and I don't think all of us really take in enough of that. But when we think about everything from the, uh, the ability to nourish the skin down to the organ consumption. I think for me, that's personally one of the things that I, I try to focus on uh, as much as possible. Right, excellent, thank you. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I hope, you know, if we get the opportunity to talk again, um, when kind of the next, maybe next year when the trial is coming out. That would, that would be, be wonderful. We'd, we'd appreciate that. Thank you very much, Richard. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Thank you, Anya. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. We are looking forward to hearing more from Ms. Kramer in the future as TurnBio progresses through the path to making their therapy available to the public. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.